Hello everyone, today we are diving into something really exciting, installing Kali Linux on a virtual machine. Using a virtual machine is a great way to explore a new operating system safely. And I'm going to walk you through each step, from downloading the necessary tools to running Kali Linux in full screen. Why use a virtual machine? You can run multiple operating systems at the same time. Each operating system runs in a separate memory environment, keeping your main system safe. You get extra security, even if you are testing a malicious app or suspicious website, it won't affect your actual system. So it's ideal for learning, experimenting and sandboxing without the risk. Let's get started. For the first step, let's check if virtualization is enabled on our PC. Before installing Kali or any operating system on VirtualBox, you need to make sure virtualization is enabled on your Windows 10 or 11 system. Here is how to check. Right click on your taskbar and then click on Task Manager. Now head to the left pin and then click on Performance tab. On the right bottom corner, you will see virtualization enabled or disabled. If it's enabled, you are good to go. If it's disabled, you will need to enable it from the BIOS. I have already made a separate video on that. Go check it out if needed before continuing. For the second step, let's download VirtualBox and extension pack. Head over to the official VirtualBox website. You can google it if needed. Just open your browser and then type in virtualbox.org. Then you press enter on your keyboard. Click on download. Here is what to download. Download VirtualBox platform packages. From here, you choose your operating system, whether Windows, Mac OS, Linux, or Solaris host. So I'll go with the Windows host. Let's move on by downloading the VirtualBox extension pack. On the same page, scroll to find it. Click on Accept and Download. Save both files somewhere easy to find. We will need them in the moment. Now on to the third step where we download Kali Linux ISO. Open a new tab and then search for Kali Linux Download. Click on the first link. Once you're on the official website, select Installer Images. Scroll down to find the latest version. Example like the Kali Linux 2024.4 and download the ISO file. Just click on the download icon. The file is about 4.1 gig. You just click on the download icon to begin the download. The download might take a while so hang tight. Now that we've got all the three files, the VirtualBox setup, the extension pack, and the Kali Linux ISO file, let's install the VirtualBox first. Double click the VirtualBox setup file. Click yes to allow this app to make changes. Now click on next and then click on or check I accept the terms in the license agreement. Then you click on next. Then you click on next again. Click on yes. Yes again. You can uncheck create a start menu entry. Then you click on next. Finally, click install. And once done, click on finish. For the next step, let's install VirtualBox extension pack. Find the Oracle VirtualBox extension pack you downloaded. Double click it. VirtualBox will open a pop up. Click on install. Scroll through the lines. Click on I agree. Then you click on yes. And you are done. Now VirtualBox is fully set up and ready to run Kali Linux. For this step, let's create Kali Linux virtual machine. Once you've launched the VirtualBox, click on the new icon. Name your virtual machine anything you want. I'll just type in Kali. Under type 32 Linux. For subtype, set it to Debian. And then the version to Debian 64 bit. Once you are done, click on next. Now, set base memory, which is the RAM. You can do this by right clicking on your taskbar and then clicking on task manager. Head to the left pane and then click on performance. Then you click on your memory. If you have 16 gigabytes, you can assign up to 8 gigabytes. I'll just use 4 gigabytes for now. So at the base memory, I'll just click and then drag. So I'll set mine to around 4096 megabytes, which is approximately 4 gigabytes. Now, let's set the CPU cores. You can head to your task manager and under performance, click on your CPU. To know the number of cores, head to the the right bottom corner, you will see the number of cores you have. If you have 8 cores, assign 4 to the virtual machine. So I'll just set mine to 4 as well. Once you are done, click on next. Let's set hard disk. Assign at least 35 to 40 gigabytes for storage and ensure you have enough free space on your drive C. So I'll just assign 30 gigabytes for now. Once you are done, click on next. Then you click on finish. For this step, let's adjust virtual machine settings. Click on the settings icon for your new Kali virtual machine. Under general settings, click on advanced. Set shared clipboard to bi-directional and then set drag and drop to bi-directional as well. Now scroll down until you get to the display settings. Increase the video memory to 128 megabytes. Now scroll down and then head to storage. Under controller ID, click on empty. Now head to the right side of the settings window and then click on the disk icon. From the 
drop down select choose a disk file now head to the location where you downloaded and save the kali linux iso file locate and select the kali linux iso file and under network sets attached to nat and you can also set it to bridged adapter if needed once you are done then you click on ok to save settings for this step let's start the installation click start to launch the virtual machine you will see the kali linux boot menu choose graphical install and press enter select your language then you press enter to continue then you set your location as well then you select your keyboard layout once you are done click on continue or press enter to continue then you wait for a while as the kali virtual machine lose additional components under network setup enter host name as kali then you click on continue or press enter to continue leave the domain name empty then you click on continue under create user enter your preferred username then you press enter to continue from here set and confirm your password once you are done setting up your password click on continue choose your time zone and then press continue under disk partition choose guided use entire disk then you press enter to continue now from here select your hard disk and then you press enter to continue for the partitioning scheme select all files in one partition which is recommended for new users once you are done press enter or click on continue now click on finish partitioning and write changes to disk press enter to continue then you select yes then you press enter to continue now it will begin installing the base system this may take a few minutes Let's continue with software selection and bootloader. For this step, I recommend you leave everything as it is. Do not make any changes here. Make sure the desktop environment, XFCE, collection of tools, top 10 the most 10 popular tools, and then the default recommended tools are being selected. Then you click on continue. This will install all essential tools. When asked to install JRUB bootloader, choose yes. Select the default disk and then press continue. Finalize the installation and click continue to reboot. For this step, let's log into Kali Linux. After reboot, at the log screen, type your username and password. Then click login. Welcome to your Kali Linux desktop. To make it full screen, click on view and then select full screen mode. Now, you are in full immersive mode with Kali Linux. And as you can see, everything is working perfectly. The audio is working and you can try a whole lot of different things with Kali Linux. If you want to exit the full screen mode, click on the right control key on your keyboard and then press F. Now, on to the final steps. Before you do anything on this operating system, I recommend you run these essential commands. Open your terminal from the left top corner. The first command you have to run is cat space forward slash etc forward slash os dash release. Then you press enter on your keyboard. This checks the system info. The next command you can try is ping space google.com. Then you press enter on your keyboard. This checks internet connectivity. The next command you can type is sudo space apt space update. Then you press enter on your keyboard. You'll be asked to enter the password for this account. After typing in the password, press enter on your keyboard. This will update packages. After the second command complete, run the last command. Enter sudo space apt install space linux dash headers dash generic. Then you press enter on your keyboard. If prompted, press y on your keyboard. Then you press enter. And that's it guys, you now have Kali Linux running inside VirtualBox on your Windows 10 or 11 PC. Everything is working smoothly, from audio to network, and you are ready to start exploring. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay updated with more tech tips. See you in the next video.